Welcome to a Locked On Titans postcast. The Tennessee Titans season ends with an offensive collapse in the second half that, quite frankly, is all too familiar for Titans fans. The quarterback turned over the ball. The offensive coordinator called terrible plays. The offensive line couldn't block, all while the defense shuts out the Jags mostly in the second half. It's a microcosm of the entire season for the Titans, and now that season is over. Let's discuss everything that took place in this game. It's a Titans postcast. Let's get it. You are Locked On Titans, your daily Tennessee Titans podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Titans fans, I know, I know, that was a tough one. I get it, I get it. That was a tough loss to the Jaguars because what the Titans did was what they've done all year long. They ripped defeat out of the jaws of victory. That is what the story of the 2022 Titans season will be. And it's it's crazy that the Titans game against the Jags went exactly how the Titans season went all year long, right? It's great. So the Titans come out in the first half of the year. They're seven and three. Pretty good start. You're getting into the second half of the season. They lose seven in a row to end up seven and 10. And you look at the game itself. The Titans are up most of the game playing good football. And then in the second half, the Titans' offense completely collapses. It, the game is simply a microcosm of what the Titans' entire season has been. So let's just talk about what the problems are here, okay? Number one, the offensive line can't block a soul. Dennis Daly got abused all night long. Aaron Brewer got abused all night long. And, and honestly, the Titans' best offensive lineman in the game was Nicholas petit Ferrer, and he even gave up a strip sack late in the game. So the offensive line can't block a soul. That's the number one problem here. Number two, 1A, 1B, heck no, this is the biggest problem. Todd Downing is the worst offensive coordinator in the NFL. Guys, do you remember the first half? Do you remember the first half? RPOs, read options, getting Dobbs on the move, play action bootlegs. Josh Dobbs threw like three passes on first downs up until the last drive. He was two for three for 40 yards and a touchdown. The Titans refused to run pass plays or play action on first down. The Oakland Raiders made Derek Carr look like an MVP. And the next year, Todd Downing takes over that offense and they plummet to the bottom of the league. The Titans have the best offense we've seen from them ever. The moment that Todd Downing takes over, they go to being one of the worst offenses in the NFL. Where was the RPO? The Titans ran one RPO in the first half and never ran another one. Never ran another one. I mean, it, it, it's really despicable stuff. So, Todd Downing, the offensive line, and guys, let's be honest. Let, let's call it what it is. Josh Dobbs turned back into a pumpkin at the end of the game. Twice, he didn't step up in the pocket to make throws downfield. One of them led to an interception. One led to the strip sack. Traylon Burks was wide open on the curl on the final fourth down of the game. And it's fourth and 13 with the season on the line. And this guy throws a five-yard pass to Hassan Haskins. On fourth and 13 for the season, he throws a five-yard dump-off pass after he misses the 15-yard curl that's wide open. So look, Josh Dobbs is not the most at fault here. Not even close. Josh Dobbs is not at fault here. He's not the most at fault. But come on. Come on, man. Come on. Same thing we saw all year. The Titans waste a good defensive effort. I mean, the Titans' defense, the Titans' defense shut the Jags' offense down in the second half. Literally shut them down. 
Shut them down. But at the end of the day, it's impossible to overcome Todd Downing in this offensive line. It's impossible. It, it, when, when you have the worst offensive line and the worst play caller in the NFL, you can't overcome that. You simply can't. So the realities are the realities here. The offensive line, terrible, garbage. Todd Downing, terrible, garbage. Josh Dobbs, not good enough to overcome that. Made a few mistakes on his own. When you have all of that together, a terrible offensive line, a terrible play caller, and a backup quarterback, when you have all of that together, you waste a defensive effort like we saw from the Titans. The Jaguars have scored in their last two months, 27, 27, 28, 31, 40, 36. The Jags' offense has been on fire for two months. And the Titans' offense held them to 13 points, or the Titans' defense held them to 13 points. And they still can't win. Because of, of the offensive collapse. It's the same exact problems that have been plaguing this team all year long. Todd Downing, the offensive line, and a quarterback who can't overcome it. So, that's what played out. That's what happened. Again, my big takeaway here is this game was a microcosm of the Titans' entire season. A really good defense that the offense completely wasted. And the same... Same culprits showed up when it mattered most. Can't say that I'm surprised, guys. I cannot say that I'm surprised. So you don't lose six games in a row and then come in and beat the hottest team in the NFL on their home turf. Just doesn't, NFL doesn't work like that. Okay. But with that being said, we got to talk about what comes next here. We, it, this Mr. Jones guy, the ref screwed the Titans, man. How do you guys watch games like that and then come up and blame the refs? Like, Todd Downing and the offensive line and Dobbs collectively ruined the game. And how do you blame? Uh, whatever, man. I can't get into all this stuff we'll, all again. We, we don't have enough time to worry about these crazy people in the comment section, man. But either way, we're going to move forward here. I, I just want to talk about some of the good that we saw in this game because there was a lot of good in there. I mean, we saw a lot of good stuff from players that it should make you excited to see good stuff from. And I know you guys hated me for it, and I was public enemy number one all week long, but I'm telling you guys, this was a good thing for the Tennessee Titans. We'll get into that in just a moment. Before we do, do want to let you know that today's postcast is brought to you by LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs is the number one place for your small business to find the help that you need. They have simple tools that you can use, hiring questions, uh, screening questions. And what I like the most about LinkedIn Jobs is there's a really cool dashboard that allows you to rank the candidates and put them in order of how they did so you can easily see how everyone stacks up, which allows you to make the right decision for your small business. It's why small businesses rate LinkedIn Jobs the number one site in delivering quality hires Versus leading competitors. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on NFL. That's linkedin.com slash locked on NFL to post your job for free. Terms and conditions do apply. Also, got to tell you guys about the best protein bars in the galaxy from our friends over at Built. Built Bars, they're fantastic. You get the best of both worlds with Built Bar. You get all of the health benefits of a protein bar, low calorie, low sugar, um, high protein, high fiber, but you get all the taste benefits of a candy bar. Some of their flavors are absolutely delicious. They got the churro, the peanut butter brownie, the coconut almond. I mean, the flavors are unbelievable because they use 100% real chocolate for every single bar. And this is one of the coolest developments. When we first started advertising with Built Bar, they were not available in stores. But due to the product being so great, they've grown. And now if you go to your local Sam's Club or you go to a Walmart, you can grab a 13-bar box with all of their hit flavors. So make sure that you check out Built.com or head to your local Walmart and Sam's Club to check out the best protein bars in the galaxy, Built Bars. Titans fans, 
It's a wild night. It is a wild night, man. This season burnt to the ground. The time, do you guys remember? Do you guys remember being seven and three after the night in Green Bay? Do you guys remember that? Remember how you felt that night? We all got so wasted that night watching that game in Green Bay. I mean, not literally drunk off alcohol, but drunk off the Titans in that game against Green Bay. I mean, we will always have Green Bay, right? Okay, so anyway, moving forward here. Guys, let's talk about some of the good stuff that was out there. I mean, Derrick Henry caught another body, had an awesome stiff arm, and if not for a terrible hold by Chickaconquo, uh, Derrick Henry had a huge run. So... I thought Derrick Henry was fine, but more importantly, Chigakonkwo and Traylon Burks. Chigakonkwo and Traylon Burks. Guys, they're good. Chigakonkwo and Traylon Burks. They are good players. Like, they're rookies for the Titans that were the best players on the offense. The most explosive players on the offense all year long were Burks and Chig. And they delivered. They delivered in the biggest moment. Jerome, I appreciate it, man. I came and trolled you after the Packers win for your season predictions. Yeah, I get it. Hey, man, I'm not even going to blame you, Jerome. I got drunk off that Green Bay game, too. I was like, they're a Super Bowl contender, despite literally saying since April, this team is garbage. <laughs> so I got drunk with you guys. It, you know, I, it is what happens. No, you're fine, Jerome. Don't say sorry. No big deal, man. We, we, all, got, we all got way too hot on the Titans after that Green Bay game. And I had been trying to tell you guys all year that this team isn't as good as they look. And I bought into it after that Green Bay game too. So I'm sorry to you guys for not holding firm on what I was trying to say all year. This is why I predicted the Titans to go 9-8. and This is a 500 roster, okay? Now, let's say these things, all right? So, Chig and Burks, good, okay? Chig and Burks are good. That's important going forward. Also, the Titans' defense was good. The Titans defense gave up 13 points to the hottest offense in the NFL. The Titans defense came to play. The Titans defense did what we expected the Titans defense to do all year long. Yeah, Zach Smith is right. Trevor Lawrence looked awful. Trevor Lawrence choked that game away and the Titans offense just choked harder. Trevor Lawrence did not win them that game. Not not even by a stretch. Trevor Lawrence was not good in the game. He missed so many passes in the second half when the Titans started getting pressure. It was the Titans offense that just incredibly collapsed. They collapsed. So, but that's what it's been all year. So, anyways, back to the good. Back to the good. Burks, Chig, good players. Dobbs. Josh Dobbs is going to be the backup for the Titans next year, and he's a solid backup. Josh Dobbs played pretty good football for a backup quarterback. He's just not good enough to to lead the Titans to that victory because he's not a starter. You know what I mean? But that's good stuff right there. You got to love that. On defense, again, the Titans defense came to play. And think about this. The Titans have 23 players on IR right now. No Bud Dupree. No Harold Landry. Taylor Lewan. Ryan Tannehill. I mean, the Titans have the most money of any team in the NFL on the IR. So, look, there's a lot of good to take out of this too. The good parts about the Titans that you thought were good are good, okay? The defense is good. The players on defense are good. The young rookies on offense are good. That's important here. And you know what else is good? And I've been trying to tell you guys all week. The Titans are going to get pick 10 or pick 11 now. No matter what, they get pick 10 or pick 11. Hello, left tackle of the future. Hello, Peter Skaronsky. Hello, Paris Johnson. Hello, Broderick Jones. Hey, you know what? If you're somebody who thinks Ryan Tannehill is a bum, If you're somebody who wants the Titans to cut Ryan Tannehill, to trade Ryan Tannehill, we need a new quarterback. Well, guess what the Titans can afford to do now? They can trade up into the top five and get a quarterback if they so choose. They weren't going to do that from 18 or 20 or 21. You can't trade up that far. You can't. You simply can't. Well, here, let me say this. 
I love when you guys come in the chat with misinformation because it gives me an opportunity to educate everyone. How many teams are in the playoffs? Can anyone answer that for uh, Bolt Zahar Fire? How many teams are in the playoffs? 14. How many teams are in the NFL? 32. What's 14? What's 32 minus 14? 18. The Dolphins don't have their first round pick this year. So the highest that the Titans could have been if they made the playoffs was 18. That's the best pick they could have had if they made the playoffs. So what I would tell you is, do you want Austin uh, Austin Jackson, the middling tackle for the Dolphins, or do you want Tristan Wirfs? Do you want the fourth best offensive tackle in the draft, or do you want the first? That's the difference. And not only that, not only that, but the Titans will get a top 10 or top 11 pick in every single round of the draft. Everybody's always talking about how awesome all these early second round options are. Oh, there's so many players left that I want after the first round is over. All these guys in the early second round that are good. Now the Titans can get them. It's not just the first round pick. Great, Dylan, this is a great opportunity. Dylan, do you want Skaronsky or Isaiah Wilson? Do you know why the Titans had to take Isaiah Wilson? Do you know why the Titans had to take Caleb Barley? Because they were picking in the early 20s or the late 20s. And there aren't 32 first-round picks in the NFL. There's simply not 32 first-round picks in the draft. So when you get into the early, mid, or late 20s, you have a choice. Do you take somebody who's ranked as a second-rounder on your board? Or do you reach for a first-round talent with a ton of flaws? The Titans in the past have reached for a first-round talent with a ton of flaws. Caleb Farley, Isaiah Wilson. And it busted. When you have a top 10 pick, the prospects don't have those kind of flaws. That's the point. That's the point. So you guys got to realize the difference here and why, why having a pick in the top 10 is severely different than having a pick in the early 20s. Okay? So look, man. Burks was awesome. Chigakonkwo was awesome. The defense was awesome. Now the Titans get a top 10 pick. They can draft the left tackle of the future or they're close enough to trade up for the quarterback of the future if, if, if Rabel buys into one of those guys. So I know that you guys don't want to hear it. You didn't want to hear it all week. This is the best thing that could have happened to the Titans. Winning the worst division in the NFL with a below 500 record and going with Josh Dobbs into a home playoff loss was not the best thing for this team. Sorry, it never was. So it hurts right now. And you guys are mad about the short-term feelings and the Jacksonville fans are clowning you on Twitter. And once the hurt goes away, you'll realize that the Titans are in a better spot right now to retool or rebuild with the picks that they now have. All right. With that in mind, last 10 minutes of the show, I'm just taking your guys' questions. I'm dealing with the chat. It's a postcast. I'm going 30 minutes instead of just 10. I'll have another 30-minute episode for you guys on Sunday night and a full week of episodes as we prepare for what will be one of the craziest off-seasons of all time. Get your questions in the chat, me and you in the chat for the final 10 minutes of the show. Can't wait to discuss everything with you guys. What a crazy all season it's about to be. Be right back. Titans fans, thank you for tuning in to a season-ending postcast here on the Locked on Titans podcast. Do want to remind you guys, Monday through Friday, all year long, all year long, I am going to be pumping out Tennessee Titans content for free, never behind a paywall. I'll never, never charge you. I'll always be here for you all spring, all summer long. 
I go over 180 draft prospects every offseason. I break down free agency lists. I do player breakdowns and film breakdowns on players from their performance from the previous season. The offseason is where the Locked on Titans podcast shines the most. Make sure you subscribe for Monday through Friday, free Tennessee Titans content on all platforms all year round. And look, I know that it sucks, but throw a thumbs up on the video right now. I appreciate the support. The content is free. The least you can do is throw a thumbs up on the video. But I'm getting a bunch of questions. Guys, there's so many of you in the chat right now. Thank you all so much. I can't answer every question, but uh, I'll try. Uh, Josh Downs or Rasheed Rice? Give me Rasheed Rice, baby. Love some Rasheed Rice. You guys put me on to him. I'm not in draft mode yet. I'm about to be now, but I haven't been in draft mode yet. So Titans fans put me on to Rasheed Rice, but I'm with it. Uh, Garrett, what is your ideal quarterback situation, not just next year, but the next two years? For me, if I was in charge or whatever, I'm rolling Malik or Josh Dobbs out at quarterback next year, and I am collapsing for Caleb Williams or misery for Drake May. That's what I, the tight, listen, Jacksonville has Trevor Lawrence. The Colts and the Texans are probably about to draft their quarterback of the future in the top five. Until the Titans get an elite quarterback, then they're always going to play this mediocre football. It's what it's been the entire time you've been a Titans fan. If you've been a Titans fan for 25 years like me, other than a couple of years with Steve and two years with Arthur Smith, the Titans have played run the ball, play defense, boring ass football. I'm tired of it. I'm tired of it. I would rather lose games 33 to 30 then lose games 16 to 13. I'm sick of it. So if we got to have a terrible season in 2023 to have a chance to get the quarterback of the future, I'm with it. And you know what? Who knows if those quarterbacks will be elite or what they need. But God, I want to try, right? All these cockamamie schemes that I don't believe anyway, Derek Carr, Aaron Rodgers, all this stuff. Come on, man. Tom Brady, get up. No. Look, the reality is I would tank for a top pick and try to get one of the top quarterbacks because there's some good quarterbacks coming next year. But Mike Vrabel ain't doing that. Mike Vrabel's bringing back Ryan Tannehill. He's putting Josh Dobbs at backup. He's going to try to win as many games as possible. If you're somebody who wants them to do that, then this outcome is best for you too because they need to fix this offensive line and there are some real good offensive line linemen that will be available for the Titans. I love this lucky Chucky. CJ Stroud, I want to trade up for CJ Stroud. And there are a lot of trade up options. The Bears, the Seahawks, the Lions, all will probably be in the top five. Or at least in the top 10. All trade up options. So, that that is a prime spot to trade up and get C.J. Stroud in front of somebody like the Colts. Uh, if they don't want to do that, if Mike Vrabel does not like any of the quarterbacks, then take one of those offensive linemen. It's, it's easy pickings, okay? Skaronsky, Paris Johnson, Broderick Jones. We ride, okay? We ride. Is next season an all-in season with the talent we currently have? To me, J.J., no, it is not. No, it is not. To Mike Vrabel, I think it absolutely is. And who's the coach and the GM and the emperor of the team? Not me. It's Mike Vrabel. Uh, do you think they could trade up to the first pick if the Texans win this week? Yes. I think it's a possibility. Will they do it? They'll only do it if Mike Vrabel is smitten by one of the quarterbacks. Because let's, let's say what it is. If the Titans cut Ryan Tannehill, save that $18 million and trade it up to number one to get the quarterback that they love, C.J. Stroud and Bryce Young are ready to play now. They are professional quarterbacks right now. So if Mike Vrabel believes in one of those guys, then you cut Tannehill, you trade the 2024 first-round pick, you move up from 10 or 11 to number one, you draft your quarterback, and then you use that $18 million that you saved on Ryan Tannehill, and you put that money towards the offensive line. Simple math. Simple decision path. Okay? This. Why was it a King Henry run every first down? Not only why, 
But when Josh Dobbs threw the ball on first down, he had like 40 yards and a touchdown. You know why it was a King Henry run on every first down? Because the Titans have a moron at offensive coordinator. And let me say this. Todd Downing knows more about, Todd Downing has forgot more about NFL football than I will ever know. Period. But that doesn't mean he knows what he's doing and should be in his job. Period. Period. Uh, is Henry staying? Yes. The Titans did some contract things with Henry before the season. It would cost them a lot of money to do a release of Derek. I think maybe he's traded, but I doubt that. I think Mike Vrabel wants to try to squeeze some juice out of this thing one more time. Downing is getting fired. There's no way he does it. Yeah, there's no way. And rumors came out over the weekend that he's going to be canned. I'm going to go into that more on tomorrow's show that I release on YouTube tomorrow night. We got to talk about this game for right now, though. Do you think we will be competitive next year? Yes. I think the Titans can still be... Guys, the Jaguars won, but let's be honest. The Jags aren't that great of a team. The Titans had 23 guys on IR, a backup quarterback, the worst OC in the league, a backup offensive line, and almost won that game. So let's let's not pretend. I know Jax fans are going to be hot right now, but let's not pretend like Jacksonville is some juggernaut or something. Come on now. Um, let me see here. Uh, does the loss tonight make you feel better about the chances that Downing? Yes! How could it not? How could it not? All the stuff that worked in the first half, Todd Downing quit running it. And not only that, but he rammed his head against a wall by running Henry on every first down. How many times this year, not just this game, have the Titans had to play in second and long? What the heck is wrong with you guys? Taylor Lewan is a podcaster now. Me and Taylor Lewan are the same. He's a media member. He's down to 275 pounds in the locker room. Taylor Lewan is done with football. Give it up, guys. Um, and he should be. The Titans can't rely on him. He's going to get hurt again. Is there any corners in free agency you want to sign, or do you think Fulton... Well, Fulton's on the team next year, so I'm not worried about that right now. Um, yeah, Lucky Chucky, you're right. Lucky Chucky, I'm going to give you a lot of credit here. You've been a very informed fan. You are you have a very good understanding of how things realistically work. Uh, Kevin, I, you're my boy, Kevin. You don't even got a question, but you're my boy. I'm going to throw your name up here. I just hope the Titans defense isn't scarred from the end of the season. Yeah, they won't be. Listen, guys, here a lot of people throughout the week said, oh, you don't want to ruin the culture with a loss. You don't want to, you know, ruin the locker room. You know what ruined the locker room? A six-game losing streak. And your offensive coordinator shooting you in the foot all year. Also, you want to talk about culture and all this stuff. Guys, the turnover in the NFL, the Titans have 23 players on IR. 75%, 60%, somewhere in between there, of the players that you saw play tonight are not even going to be on the team next year. So what are you talking about culture and all this in the locker room for? Most of these guys aren't going to be on next year's team. So I, I don't buy into, buy into that. If we deal Tannehill, we get 50 mil. No, 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 that's not right. The, if the Titans trade Tannehill before June the 1st, they still have to eat $18 million in, in dead cap. If they trade him after June 1st, they still have to eat $9 million in dead cap. You guys got spottrack.com, man. It's really not hard to understand how the contracts break down. It's really not. Do you think uh, we should look for someone outside or inside the organization for OC? Mike Vrabel is a loyalty guy. I think Tim Kelly, who's the Titans um, passing game coordinator and a senior offensive assistant, he led those good offenses with Deshaun Watson in Houston. I think Tim Kelly is promoted to offensive coordinator. Peter Skaronsky to the Titans, yes. And even if you're somebody who thinks Peter Skaronsky is a, a guard, that kind of versatility is good. The guy's played 2,000 snaps in college and been amazing, all right? Didn't we give away a third and a fifth? We need that back. Uh, they gave away a fifth for daily next year, though, 2024. Um, I do believe that the fourth round pick goes to Atlanta, but the Titans got a sixth round pick back in another deal. So um, it'll all equal out, and, and I think they'll have enough to make some moves. Um, do you think that ownership and the coaches possibly consider moving on from Henry? I don't think they trade Derrick Henry now, though. No, it, it, I don't think that happens. What round do they take another corner? Mid-rounds, third, fourth, fifth. I don't think you go first or second. Too many needs 
on offense. Um, anything but QB this year, and we will stink and have a shot at Caleb Williams next year. I hope, but Mike Vrabel ain't gonna ain't gonna be cool with that. Um, and Jigba or Paris, Paris Johnson all day, guys. We need offensive line. Okay, they need offensive line. If they address it in free agency, then sure, go with Jordan Addison, go with Quentin Johnson. I still think eleven or ten would be a reach for in Jigba, especially actually after what happened um, this year. What about Stroud? Booty. I, I've said it, and I'll continue to say it. If Mike Vrabel loves C.J. Stroud, then go get him. Uh, Quentin Johnson, if they address offensive line in free agency, then I'm fine with wide receiver. But I don't see the Titans going wide receiver two years in a row in the first round. What do we do with left guard, center, and right guard? You re-sign Nate Davis. You move Aaron Brewer to center. You sign a free agent at left guard or left tackle. And then you draft a starter at the position that you don't sign in free agency. That's what I've been asking. Um, let me see here. Any more? I got I to gotta be done soon. You guys are flying in the comments. Uh, I already answered that one. Let's go down a little further. Sorry if I missed your question, guys. There's a lot of questions. Um, Stroud or Young? For me... I think C.J. Stroud has more upside as a prospect. Bryce Young is more ready to play right now. I think Mike Vrabel would fall more in love with Bryce Young, in my opinion. So, um, what if, even though I like Tannehill, get rid of him, Bud Dupree, Lawan Woods, and invest? Well, not only that, but Bud Dupree, Taylor Lawan, Robert Woods, and Zach Cunningham are goners. All right, they're gone. And that's going to get the Titans to about low 30s. In salary cap space, if you do Tannehill too, you're getting to around 50. Um, so that'd be interesting. What do you think of Frank Reich as a future OC? I love that. I love that. Frank Reich is a very good football coach, okay? What's up with 4th and 13, 7 yards? Uh, that's not Todd Downing's fault. The 4th down at the end of the game is on Dobbs. Traylon Burks was wide open on the curl, and Dobbs missed him and instead threw a 5-yard pass to the running back. Dobbs blew that fourth down, not Todd Downing, but Todd Downing blew the game before it, so they both can fight over who blew it more. Um, see here, I like Dobbs as a starter. Yeah, if they want to tank for Caleb Williams or or Drake May, then yeah, go with Dobbs as a starter. That'll get the Titans the first pick pretty quickly. Um, see, some of you guys are repeating your questions. It's very confusing to me. Anyways, uh, guys... Been on for 35 minutes. Um, I'll say it again. I'll say it again. This is what was best for the Titans. Whether you want them to rebuild or whether you want them to retool. Getting that top pick and getting an offensive lineman for the future or having the ability to trade up for quarterback is what was best for this team. Winning the worst division in football with a below 500 record, with Josh Dobbs as your quarterback in the playoffs, is not a better outcome than having a top 11 pick. It's simply not. So, this hurts. I know that you guys hate having Jags fans happy. All of that. Buh, 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 buh. But once the pain goes away, you'll realize this was for the best. That's going to do it for me today. I'll be back with you guys tomorrow around uh, 6, 7 p.m. Dropping a brand new 30-minute episode. Talking about where we go from here. Talking about Todd Downing, the reaction to the game, all of that. But that's going to do it for me today, folks. As always, I am your host, Tyler Rowland. And this is Locked on Titans.